So guys, we're getting back into the Batman uh, comic series, the main title, and guys, we're now jumping into Batman number 102, and we have the arrival of the Ghost Maker. Now guys, for this video, I'm trying something different, alright? Usually, yes, I read through the actual issue, and I give you kind of like a, not a synopsis, but pretty much the actual issue, so you can listen to it while you're doing something else, right? And then I get my thoughts afterwards. Now, I'll still be getting my thoughts afterwards, but this time when I'm reading the issue, I'll actually have a new mic, guys. I got a blue mic, and I think the audio should be better. So it's not that much different for the video, guys, but I'm hoping that sounds better. You guys tell me your pretty much opinions on it down below. Does it sound better? Like, right now, I don't have a mic, obviously. This is just actually just me recording this. But when we get to the actual issue and I'm explaining it to you guys, I'm hoping the audio will sound better. I hope so. If it doesn't, tell me, guys, all right? So I'll improve upon it. I just got the mic, so these first few videos, I'm testing it out, all right? So give me some feedback. But yeah, guys, uh, in the description below, I'll actually link down below all my Batman comic reviews from the Joke Award, their dark designs, the recent Batman number 101 with the Grifter, and Batman going back to a street-level hero. But what we're picking up now is just Batman. He's trying to stop these clowns. All these different clowns so he can stop the clown hunter. Now the ghost maker, he's showing up and he has his own agenda, which will be revealed in the issue. But yeah guys, if you're right, let's dive into Batman, number 102. Batman number 102 opens up in Gotham City, Old Town, present day. And the ghost maker has his cop, he's tied up. And the ghost maker says, I hate this city, I really do. You think it's all just personal. But I didn't know him when I first came here. I was a teenager looking to improve myself. It didn't take me long to realize I wasn't going to improve here. No one does. The city stinks of trash, sweat, urine, and blood. It stings on your nostrils. You never stop tasting iron in the air. Its buildings are garish monstrosities, twisted and strange, and now it all seems intertwined to scaffolding. The sounds of the sea scream at you without stopping. It offends each of your senses in turn. I honestly believe that this city is driving each of you insane. But I suppose it'd have to for any of you to want to live here. If I have billions of dollars in my disposal, I'd pay each of you to move somewhere nice and burn it all to the ground so they could start over. It's what he should have done if he really cared about you. And then the cop says, why are you saying all that? Why, what do you want? And that's when Ghostmaker has a sword to the, this police officer's neck. And the Ghostmaker, he's not really evil. He's against what's going on in Gotham City. And the Ghostmaker says, my ghost net has already entangled its web deep into your computer systems. I've mapped key criminal patterns of the city, and I'm going to solve each of them for you. But right now, there's a hole in the system, and the hole is named Clown Hunter, a child you all seem to be allowing to keep doing your dirty work. You're going to tell me everything I need to find him and stop him. Now the cop says, I'm not a dirty cop. You can't threaten me like this. That's not how you, ba you bats uh, work. And that's when Ghostmaker says, Do I look like a bat to you? I am the Ghostmaker. I am better than Batman. I am here to prove it. Now talk. So guys, we open up and we see Ghostmaker, and he's just trying to stop Clown Hunter. That's his main goal. He doesn't really care about Batman. He doesn't care. Well, he kind of cares about Gotham City. He wants Gotham City to be better, but he thinks that Clown Hunter is something that's making it worse. Now, we shift and we see Batman fight off against these clowns. And we hear Oracle, aka Barbara Gordon, in the background. And she says, they call themselves Grinners. Most of them have partial facial paralysis due to exposure to various Joker toxins. These are the diehards. So guys, what we see here is Batman is fighting off against these um, Grinners, right? And they look like Jokers, they have green hair, they have a smile, and they've been around for the, a long time. Oracle explains that they've been around since, like, say, Harley Quinn. That's way back. Guys, Harley Quinn was introduced in Batman the Ambient series way back in the 1990s. So the fact that these characters have been around that long is a big deal. And they're not really henchmen of the Joker. Henchmen of the Joker are say just are regular criminals. No, these are actually diehards. These are people you don't really want to mess with who are just clowns. And usually Joker doesn't deal with them, he doesn't kill them because they kind of fall in line with his plan without even knowing it. But Batman's now trying to take him down. Now the reason that Batman is trying to take 
these uh, different clowns down, these Grinners, because he doesn't want no one else to die. Because the Clown Hunter, if you don't know him, guys, what he pretty much was, was his parents were killed by clowns, were killed by the Joker, actually, and he's going after each clown. And he's killing them. He's taking them out of Gotham safe. Batman actually confronted him. And I'll actually put that, um, my video down below in the description about that. He confronted him, told him, hey, stop doing this. Don't be killing clowns. Clown, Clown Hunter said no. But Batman doesn't want to stop this kid. Because he thinks this kid has potential. He could become good. So Batman's whole solution to this is, hey, take out the, all the clowns in the city. So Clown Hunter will have nobody to kill. So that's when Batman kicks the door down, coming into the Grinner's hideout. And that's what Oracle says. That's strange. You're not registering on my body now. It's on a loop. Damn it. We've been played. Get out of there, Batman. It's a trap. But that's when Batman sees all these people, all the Grinners, dead. You see them stabbed. They're on the um, different tables. They're killed. Look, there's a bunch of dead bodies in this room. And Batman says, no. It's a message. Now, that's what Oracle says. I thought Clown Hunter was a kid with a bat. Being able to get around my surveillance software, and that's when Batman sees the symbol of the Ghost Maker. And Batman says, This isn't Clown Hunter, this is something else. Oracle, deactivate your computer systems now. Maintain radio silence until I contact you. Now, that's when Oracle says, What the? Batman, what's going on? And that's when Batman says, I'll explain when this is over. And Barbara says, Don't cut me out now, I can help you through whatever this is. And Batman says, I'm sorry, Oracle. But this is personal. Now we shift to many years ago in Dublin, Ireland. And we see this man get thrown out of a window. He's thrown out of the window of a bar. And we see Bruce Wayne come out of this window. He's the one who threw this man. And Bruce says, I traveled a long way to find you. I was told that there is nobody on the planet who can wield a knife like you. Teach me. That's when the man says, what the heck do you think you're doing? And Bruce says, I need to get your attention. You wouldn't listen in the bar. And the man says, maybe I've had a long day. I've earned a pint in some silence. And Bruce says, your name is Tommy Tavain. You've won in 16 countries. And Tommy says, you got some kind of death wish. And Bruce says, let me show you what I've learned already. I can prove to you that I'm a worthy, pretty much person to be taught, right? And Tommy says, really think you're something, don't you? And then we hear from the side, huh. He really does. And Bruce says, that voice. And we see a man in the shadows. And he has like a bandana on, a white bandana. And the man says, or more like the teenager says, he thinks he's better than you, Tommy. He thinks he's better than all of us. You can't take it personally. Of course, it's in his nature, it's how he was raised. And Bruce says, no. And the man says, he's a spoiled brat, a rich American, and cries himself to sleep at night, thinking of his dead parents. And that's when he comes out of the shadow, it's the Ghost Maker, a young Ghost Maker. And Ghost Maker says, beat you again, Bruce, go find your own knife expert, this one is mine. And Bruce says, I swore if I saw you again, I would break every bone in your body, after what you did to our master in Morocco. That's when he charges at the Ghost Maker, he tries to punch him, but the Ghost Maker moves out of the way, dodges the punch. And Ghost Maker says, you need to stop living in the past and start living in the present. Otherwise, you're never going to be able to hit me. That's when they start uh, pretty much fighting. Ghost Maker tries to kick. Bruce dodges. The Ghost Maker says, you want this train? You want this teacher? Then you're going to have to beat me, Bruce. That's how this game works. And Bruce says, I know. Now shut up and fight me. They keep fighting. In the distance, Tommy Tavain says, I freaking hate teenagers. Now that's when we shift to Gotham City, Little Santa Prisca. And this is actually the present day. And we see Harley Gwen, she's actually trying to get an apartment, right? And the person who owns these apartments, the landlord, is pretty much telling her, Hey, you're a freak, we don't need somebody like you here. You have a costume, you're not reasonable. And Harley pretty much backs up her claim by saying, Hey, I know I have a costume on, but hey, if Superman showed up, wouldn't you let him in? And the landlord says, No, he's Superman, I would let him in. And Harley's like, Hey, give me a second chance. Let me in. And she says, Superman will you accept your offer because this place is not high class. It doesn't fit him. Where I have no class, it fits Harley Quinn better. Now the landlord says, so what are you offering up? And Harley says, double the rent. And he tells her, hey, okay, double the rent. You have to go by the rules. Santa Prisca, this little place, these little apartments has survived the city of Bane, the Joker War. They survived Bane and Joker, all the attacks. So they're not going to be taken down by Harley Quinn. And Harley Quinn's like, yeah, that sounds good. But as the landlord walks away, Harley Quinn's like, hey, 
what's your policy on hyenas? Now we shift and we see Clown Hunter and he's watching Harley Quinn. And he's actually there to take her down, guys. He's there to kill her. And before he could do that, we hear from the distance. And we see the Ghost Maker. He says, I don't know, kid. Seems like a good way to blow yourself up. And he's talking about how Clown Hunter is about to use a rocket launcher to kill Harley Quinn. But that could actually kill Clown Hunter at the same time. Now, Clown Hunter says, are you reading my phone's mind? And that's what the Ghost Maker says, <laughs> not personally. My suit certainly is. Your search history is real. Treat. I must say, inspirational. Even as always, the next generation blazes bold new trails through taboo. That's when Clown Hunter says, I don't think I like you. And Ghostmaker says, oh, You shouldn't. I'm afraid you're about to blow up an apartment. You're a criminal. See, I don't come from a, a backward place like Gotham. I come from the world out there. And out there, we'll just throw our killers back into the water with the other fish. We got them. And that's when the Clown Hunter says, yeah, really don't like you. And the Ghostmaker puts a sword to the Clown Hunter's neck. But that's when Batman shows up and punches Ghostmaker. And Batman says, that makes two of us. So Batman and Clown Hunter are on the same page. They both don't like the Ghostmaker. Now Batman says, Ghostmaker. Ghostmaker says, Batman. That's when Batman says, we have an agreement. This is my city. And the Ghostmaker says, then do your damn job. That's when they start fighting. He gets his swords out, goes to charge at the Clown Hunter. He says, the sea is riding from the inside out, but you still won't do what must be done to save it. Why is this boy still on the streets, Batman? You could have locked him away or stopped him. Instead, you left him free to kill again. Even a sea as awful as Gotham deserves better than you. And that's when Batman blocks his sword from cutting through Clown Hunter. And Batman says, I won't let you hurt the boy. That's what Ghostmaker says, then you will do it like we did when we were young. How about it, Batman? I'll fight you for it. And Batman says, I won't play a game for his life. And Ghostmaker says, you're missing the whole skill of the thing. I'm not saying the winner takes the boy. The winner takes Gotham. And you see Batman and Ghostmaker engage in a lethal battle. And that's how we close out issue number 102 of the Batman. So guys, that was Batman number 102, and I thought that was a solid opening to this new story arc titled Ghost Stories, right? We have the arrival of Ghostmaker, and right off the bat, let's talk about him, alright? Ghostmaker, he's an interesting character, alright? I kind of think he's cool. I like his design. His design looks dope. Now, him himself, yeah, it's cool that he translates back to, like, the early years of Batman when Bruce was trying to look for teachers and how he's kind of like a rival of Bruce as teenagers. I thought that was pretty cool. And when Bruce showed up and threw that one guy, the knife teacher, out the window, and then Bruce and Ghostmaker, we don't actually know Ghostmaker's real name yet, but they fought to try to get the, the best teacher. I thought that was cool. It's a cool little rivalry, but what led them to become like actually real enemies and it's actually cool that in this one issue part one batman and ghostmaker already meet they're already fighting i honestly thought that okay a few issues down the line or maybe at least or like next issue batman and ghostmaker meet like i felt like they would build up to it but no james tynan is like nope I'll introduce Ghostmaker, they fight, we actually get some of Ghostmaker's origin, how he relates back to Bruce in this entire one issue. Like, that's pretty cool, I like that. James Tyen approached this in a great way. He just said, hey, you wanna know who the Ghostmaker is? Here it is. Oh, he's fighting with his Batman. Here's Ghostmaker's motives. He wants to take down the Clown Hunter. I like that. It just lays it like just out for us so we know why he's here, who he is, and then now it's just going to be expanded upon. His character will be expanded upon in upcoming issues. So right off the bat, I like his character. He's awesome. And Batman, the issue, he's good too. I like how in the past he's going against Ghostmaker. In the ending, when Ghostmaker's like, hey, the winner gets Gotham. That raises the stakes. It gets me excited for their actual big fight next issue. Now, other parts of this issue. We got Harley Quinn, which she doesn't have really a big part. It just shows she's still a supporting character, which I'm fine with. I don't want Harley Quinn coming a big character in the series. This is Batman's title, not hers. But her being in the series is always welcome, though. I like her being a supporting character. Now, Clown Hunter doesn't really do much, but it shows she's to be an important role in this whole story arc because both Batman and Ghostmaker are fighting because of him. So, we'll see what Clown Hunter does, and so far I like his character, I like Clown Hunter, but I want him to be more expanded upon. I feel like he won't be that, like, expanded upon this actual story arc, he'll be more expanded upon in the upcoming Batman annual comic. I think it's annual number four. Yeah, annual number four. 
But yeah, guys, overall, it's just pretty good. The ride was solid. It's a solid opener. Now, the artwork wasn't the best. It opened up pretty good. I liked the artwork at the beginning, but over time, as the, as the issue went on, especially the final pages, I just felt like the artwork was very not that good in comparison to Jorge Menes and even like Gullion March. Like the artwork's not bad, but I think we deserve better if it's gonna be on main Batman title. Now, uh, maybe it's just me being like, hey, I've been looking at Jorge Menes art and Gullion March's art, which are amazing artists, and now we just get kind of like an average or just like decent artist and it just pales in comparison it may just be that but for me i wasn't a big fan of the artwork but i was a fan of the story so that's why i'm gonna give this first part of ghost stories an 8 out of 10 guys i recommend check it out if you really want to know more about the ghost maker and how he factors into this new storyline we guys in the comment section below tell me about this issue did you love it did you hate it what was your favorite part what do you think about the ghost maker and what are your theories for next issue and also tell me what you thought about the new addition of the blue mic to this channel, guys. I'm using it now for like the audio part, or pretty much like me telling the story part of the video, where I tell the story to you guys, where I explain to you guys. Tell me if it sounded better, did it sound more crisp, but did you enjoy it more? Tell me all your thoughts on that down below. And guys, like me to give a big thumbs up, chill, and make sure my next Batman comic review. And yeah, guys, thanks for watching, and peace out.